I'm Wim Crowell. I'm sitting here in my own exhibition. It's a large exhibition in the Design Museum, and I'm very happy with it. Although I always try to be timeless, but time is reflected in all the pieces of work. So I don't believe in timelessness anymore. That's what I see in this exhibition especially. My old work from the 50s is different from the 60s, different from the 70s, different from the 80s and the 90s. It develops all the time. But in the same time, I hope it is recognizable because I think it's very important for a designer to be recognized that he makes a kind of work that you, re that you can immediately from a distance see that's coming from him or from her. He's a, oh, fantastic that I recognize him. In Holland, there is a specific path for the design from the 70s on. In the 70s, the art schools ch are changing. Especially, this, it started with an art school in the east of Holland, in Enschede, where they did away from the, with the Bauhaus system. And that school changed the whole thing, and they said, we'll have three or four years pre-course, and do only the finalization at the end. So that made much more a experimental view to design, and uh, personality development, that was the slogan. So they developed people who were critical and who developed another way of thinking. And that system of that school was adopted by all the other schools in Holland. So the schools became very experiment oriented, very much. And that gave a certain flavor to the Dutch design. In the, in the, the middle of the 60s, the digitization came, the computers came on. And the, the product that came out, the Garamond typeface that came out, was so ugly. It, it, was, from, it was a far shadow from the original uh, Garamond. And I thought, this is not the meaning of the machinery. And maybe I should design a typeface for that machine. And what I discovered was that curves by the dots in the grid system were affected highly by the digitized system. If you had only a six-point typeface, you only had five or six dots available for the curve. If you had a 20-point, you had many more dots available for the curve. So the curve, when the bigger the typeface is, the better the curve becomes. If you only use straight lines, whether small or big, it's always the same. So that's why I decided to make a typeface with only straight lines, diagonals and straight lines. And when I developed that into my typeface, it became an almost unreadable typeface. But I was so influenced by the idea that it I didn't matter. If, if it didn't matter at all for me that you couldn't read it. It was just an idea. It was an experiment for other designers to follow it. And it was only at the end of the 90s when I saw suddenly in England, the pop magazines, they used the typeface as headings and made it a little more readable. And it was strange to see after 40 years you work back in pop magazine, especially in England. Maybe that's the reason why I have an exhibition here, because it was the English designers who redeveloped my work from that period.